Dear students, today we will talk about the most important topic of class 11th and uh, which is very much interesting also. We are going to talk about the topic name projectile motion. So, if I will talk about the projectile, right, then projectile is better known as, if I will talk about projectile, we all also say this motion as motion in two dimension. Right? So, if I will talk about the two dimension motion, because previously you must have studied about motion in one dimension. Once we say motion in one dimension, that means suppose if a person who is driving a car on a straight road, then what we say that the motion of the object is along the straight path along a straight line. So, that that is why that will be called motion in one dimension. Now, if I will talk about motion in 2D, motion in 2D that means motion in two dimension, in which our object is going to move along two axes simultaneously, one along x and the other one along whatever y. And you must have seen the example for that. Like suppose if I will hold a pen in my hand and if I will throw this object right from here in this direction you can simply understand how it is going to move because once I will throw this, this will go along horizontal direction and it will also fell down. So, if it will fell down, then that is the motion along y direction if I will consider this axis as y and this will, if it will move along a straight path, then this is, if I consider, consider this direction as a x, then this is the motion along whatever x direction. So, this object is going to travel along two paths, it will be covering two paths simultaneously that is whatever x and y. So, this is the reason we say what this the motion of the projectile is whatever motion in 2D. So, this motion is called whatever projectile motion. Now, if I will talk about the definition, then what we can say? Whenever we throw an object obliquely nearby the earth's surface, then the motion of the object is said to be projectile motion. Mind it, what I am saying, nearby the earth's surface, that is a very important statement to understand. Nearby the earth's surface because the value of gravity remains uniform nearby the earth's surface. So, whenever we deal with this concept, you have to keep this thing in your mind that the height should not be very, very large. The motion is always going to talk, uh, to take place uh, uh, nearby the whatever surface of earth. So, see, in projectile motion, we will talk about horizontal projection, then we will talk about oblique projection, then the next we will talk about relative motion of projectile and at the end we will talk about motion on inclined plane. Now, there are two things that we should understand. The horizontal projectile motion and the oblique projectile motion is under CBC syllabus that is important for the school, school exam also. If I will talk about relative motion of projectile and motion on inclined plane of projectile, then this is going to cover your entrance part as well. If I will talk about J main, if I will talk about J advanced, then these things are, the, the entire thing is going to cover CBC and entrance pass both. So, we will start our concept right from the basic and that is what our horizontal projection. In horizontal projection, what we do? We take the object and we throw the object along x direction with some certain velocity. So, if I will throw this object right from some altitude y, let us say this is the altitude of this object and from here we are going to throw this along horizontal direction. We can obviously say this, this object is going to fall like this. So, this is going to be the displacement of object along x direction 
this is considered to be x axis and this is considered to be y axis right during this projectile motion here we take some certain assumption the assumption is the object that we are throwing must be a particle and the other assumption is that we are doing this motion in absence of air friction no air drag no air friction nothing is there this motion is taking place in vacuum under the presence of gravity right so as i said there is no air drag no air friction that means what Ki if i'm throwing this object along this direction then in this direction there is no force which is going to act on this pen if i'll throw this then that means there is no air drag no air friction so again understand this this particular pen is not going to experience any force so if no force is there then obviously acceleration along x direction becomes zero so we say what motion along x is going to be uniform so the motion along x will remain uniform that means what the object is not going to change its velocity along x direction because velocity changes once acceleration exists but if there is no acceleration then there is no change in magnitude of velocity right now if i'll talk about motion along y because we have studied the nature of motion along x so now we'll define what kind of motion is going to take place along y direction if i'll talk about y direction motion you know this the gravity is the natural acceleration which exist down the <coughs> in a downward direction so obviously motion if i'll talk about motion along y then this must be uniformly accelerated so the motion will not remain uniform this will become uniformly accelerated see <coughs> now if i'll move ahead then now we we'll talk about we'll deal with motion along x direction first so if i'll talk about motion along x direction if you look at the figure then displacement of the object along x direction is what x you must have seen i have thrown this object along this direction it has fallen at a distance of x right right on the ground so displacement along x is x and the initial velocity that we have given was u and if i'll talk about acceleration then there is no acceleration along x direction and let us suppose the time is whatever t applying second equation of motion that is s equal to ut plus half at square along x direction we can write sx equal to uxt plus half xt square now if i substitute x here in place of sx will substitute x then in place of ux will substitute u plus ax is zero then this entire term will become zero so from here we get what you get x is equal to what ut so that becomes the formula for finding the displacement of projectile along x direction so as we have calculated the formula for displacement along x direction in a same manner we can calculate the displacement along y direction so now we'll deal with the motion along y direction separately and always remember bachcho like if you are dealing with motion in 2d then you have to deal with the motion separately along x and separately along y so if i'll talk about motion along y direction then we write what displacement of object along y direction if you look towards the figure if you look towards the figure you must have identified look at here this is a displacement of projectile along y direction and that is whatever y 
if I'll talk about initial velocity along y direction, that must be what? Zero. Because initially you have given velocity along this direction, you have not given any velocity along y direction. Along y you can see where we have thrown the object. We have thrown the object along this direction. So this object is not going to possess any velocity along y direction. So ui in this case is whatever? Zero. Now, let's come back over the calculation. So sy here is y. Your ui, if I'll talk about ui, then your ui becomes 0. Acceleration along y is going to exist because now there is a gravity. Along x, there was no force, but along y, if I'll say, then there is an acceleration that is called whatever gravity which is going to exist. And let's again consider that the time is t. So, if I apply equation of motion once again, <coughs> equation of motion once again, then sy co we can write y, uy is 0 into t plus half acceleration is g, then from here we are going to get the expression and that is what y equal to half gt square. So, from this formula we can calculate the displacement of the projectile along y direction. So, for along x, you can recall, if I will talk about along x, this was x equal to ut, that is equation 1. And if you want to find the displacement along y direction, then it is whatever, half gt square. Now, the most important part that we define in this case, and that is whatever, equation of trajectory. We will talk about equation of trajectory. About trajectory, you must have studied in motion in one dimension. But let me brief you once again, so that your concept will be very much clear. If I will talk about trajectory, trajectory is actually a geometrical path followed by any object. See, Trajectory can be straight line. Once if object starts moving on a straight path, then what you say in terms of mathematics, the trajectory, the geometry of this path is what? Straight. So its trajectory is what? It is a straight line. So in physics, trajectory can be a straight line. If I will throw this object like this, then you can observe, yes, the path is going to be parabolic. Path even can be elliptical in case of planet. You must have studied that all the planets revolve around the sun in an elliptical orbit. Then what is the trajectory in that case of the, that all that planets? It is elliptical. Path can be helical also. So the basic concern is what? Trajectory is always going to define the geometrical path. So here we will talk about equation of trajectory. Now see, we have x equal to ut. We also have y equal to half gt square. From here, if I will define time, then time is what? x by u. So, if I will talk about y, it is half g x square upon u square. So, what I have done here? Equation of trajectory means to establish the relation between y and x by eliminating time. So, any time if you have to find equation of trajectory, so nothing to worry, what all you need to do, you just have to eliminate time from both the relations. Once you will be able to eliminate the time, you will be able to get the equation of trajectory. So in this case, you can see that y is directly proportional to what? x square. Because g is constant, 2 is constant, your u initial velocity is fixed. So in this case, y is directly proportional to x square. And this is going to be equation of what? Parabola. So from here you can say the trajectory is going to be parabolic. So it is going to follow the parabolic path. So that is the mathematical evidence we can talk about. So this is how we can prove that your horizontal projectile motion is whatever is going to, uh, is going to cover the parabolic path. Now.
Now see, after talking about horizontal projectile motion, now we'll talk about oblique projectile motion. This is also a same concept, but the basic difference is what? Here we are going to throw the object at some certain angle. And this is really very, very important from your school examination point of view if I'll talk about the derivation part of it. In oblique, what we are going to do? In horizontal, what we have done? Let's understand again the horizontal projectile motion. In horizontal projectile motion, we have thrown the object along this direction. And you have seen the path followed by this object. In oblique, what we are going to do? We are going to throw the object at some certain angle. We are going to throw like this, at some certain angle. The way you used to throw the ball. If you usually throw the ball, you always throw the ball like this, by making some certain angle with respect to horizontal. So the motion of the ball in that case will become oblique projectile motion. And we, talk, we say what? This is going to be oblique projection. So see the path followed by the object that we are going to throw at some certain angle. Now see, from here we are going to throw the object with some certain initial velocity u. And this makes an angle theta here. So theta is the angle of what? Projection. So if you throw the object like this, it is somehow going to fall like this along x. So in this case, this theta is what? This is called angle of projection. Now, if I'll talk about this height attained along y direction, then this h max is called maximum height along y direction. So that is the maximum height attained. In the same manner, if I will talk about the horizontal displacement in this case of projectile, then this r is called horizontal range. So this is what? Range is nothing but it's the displacement along x direction, the total displacement. I'm talking about the total displacement. So once you'd like to find the total displacement along x direction, that becomes whatever? Horizontal range. At the same time, if I'll talk about capital T, capital T is whatever? Time of flight. So what is time of flight? This is the total time taken by the object during its entire motion. Look, you can see if you're going to throw the object from here, then the time taken by object during its entire journey is called whatever? Time of flight. Beside time of flight, we also define here is time of ascent. So time of ascent is what? This is the time taken by the projectile in reaching the maximum height. Let's say if you're going to throw the projectile from here, then it will be reaching at this point. So the time taken by the projectile in reaching the maximum height is called whatever? Time of ascent. At the same time, if I'll define TD, TD stands for time of descent. So time of descent is what? The time taken by the projectile in reaching the ground from the maximum height. And as you know, in a, whether we talk about the horizontal projectile motion or we talk about the oblique projectile motion, right? In both the cases, we ignore air friction and air drag, right? So this is the reason the time of ascent and time of descent will remain the same because there is no force which is acting along what our x direction. So time of ascent and time of descent is always same. So here, if you'd like to write, you can say what? If they're same, then we must write Ta equal to Td equal to T by 2. So in this derivation, what all we need to do? We simply want to make the calculation for time of flight. We want to calculate the h max. And then we'll be calculating the horizontal range. And at the end, we also explain the equation of trajectory for this path also, right? So let's talk about motion along y direction.
see <coughs> before dealing out with motion along y or x first of all we should break the component of this velocity we can break the component along x and y direction and you can say here because u is making an angle theta with respect to x so the component of u is along what it is u cos theta and along y direction it is whatever u sin theta and this u cos theta component you know this will remain the same it is not going to change at any instant of time at any instant of time this u cos theta i'm so sorry i have written here u sin theta this should be u cos theta u cos theta will remain the same so this is not going to change because there is no force which is acting along x direction now let's come back over motion along y direction if i'll talk about the net displacement of the object along y we have thrown the object right from the ground and you can see that the object is going to fall on the ground here that means what the net displacement of the object along y is zero because you have thrown the object from the ground and the ground is falling again over the ground so there is no net displacement which is going to exist in this case so see if i'll talk about displacement along y sorry initial velocity along y if i'll talk about initial velocity along y this is u sin theta and the acceleration which is existing along y is whatever gravity and let's say the total time of flight is whatever capital t now again applying second equation of motion we can write s equal to ut plus half at square now if you substitute the value you get what u sin theta into t minus half g t square if you make the calculation from here then we get what t equal to 2u sin theta divided by g so this is going to be the formula for what time of flight so this is the time of flight for for oblique projectile motion so if time of flight is 2u sin theta by g then your time of ascent and time of descent becomes what u sin theta by g because we already have discussed the time of ascent and time of descent is just the half of time of flight so if the time of flight is 2u sin theta by g then time of ascent and time of descent becomes what it becomes u sin theta by g i hope the concept is very much clear right now if i were moving ahead then we can make the calculation for maximum height so now we'll derive the expression for maximum height now let's say if i'll talk about the initial velocity along y direction then you can see from the figure the initial velocity was u sin theta if i'll talk about velocity at the maximum height so let's see the figure let's see the figure you can see we have given the initial velocity along y direction that is what our u sin theta and the motion of this projectile is continuously against the gravity so the velocity along x will remain fixed because there is no acceleration along x direction as i told you whether it is going to be horizontal projectile motion or it is going to be oblique projectile motion there is no acceleration which is going to exist so motion along x will remain constant the magnitude of velocity and direction of velocity will remain the same along x direction but along y you can see we have thrown the object with some certain velocity that is what u sin theta and this motion is along gravity so at every instant the magnitude of velocity keeps on decreasing along y direction and finally it becomes zero 
at the maximum height. Reason because this is not further going along y direction. So obviously the velocity becomes whatever 0 at the h max. But this can continue to move along x direction reason because the magnitude of velocity exists along x direction even at the point of maximum height. Now see. <coughs> so we actually wanted to calculate the expression for maximum height. So now we have seen in the figure that velocity along y becomes 0 and the acceleration is whatever minus g and the displacement till maximum height is whatever h max. So we can apply the equation v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s. So v square y is 0, u square y is u square sin square theta minus 2 g into h max. So what about the h max? This becomes u square sin square theta divided by 2 g. So that is the expression for what our maximum height. This is the h max that we have calculated. Now, after h max, we have calculated time of flight. We have calculated maximum height. Now we'll make the calculation for what horizontal range. Now to calculate the horizontal range, we have to take the motion along x direction. So let's say the displacement of the object along x is r. The velocity of the object is along x direction is u cos theta. The acceleration is 0. And the total time of flight that we have calculated was 2u sin theta by g. So once again, we'll use second equation of motion. So sx is r u cos theta into t plus ax is 0. So you get what? r is equal to u cos theta into t is 2u sin theta by g. So from here we can write what? 2u square sin theta into cos theta divided by g. So it is u square sin 2 theta divided by g. So this is going to be the expression for maximum height. You can see here, I have used the formula of trigonometry. Here what I have used, that is sin 2 theta is always equal to 2 sin theta cos theta. So what I did here, I have replaced 2 sin theta cos theta by sin 2 theta. Now further, here we will talk about the special condition, that is for maximum range, if you you want to throw the object to the maximum distance, then see your expression for range is what u square sin 2 theta by g. So in this case, to maximize it, we have to put sin 2 theta 1. So this will be 1 when sin 2 theta is equal to sin 90. That means 2 theta should be 90. That means the angle of projection should be 45 degree. So if we throw up a projectile at an angle of projection 45 degree, then distance travel will always be maximum in this case. So what we can write here? That r maximum becomes what? u square by g. So that is going to be the formula for whatever maximum range. So if you want to calculate the maximum range at any point of time, you can use this particular formula. So we have derived the relation for time of flight. We have discussed maximum height. We have discussed horizontal range and then the maximum horizontal range. Now, the last thing that we'll discuss is the equation of trajectory. So once again, in this case, we are going to talk about equation of trajectory. So displacement at any instant along x direction should be x. If I'll be considering, like suppose there is the projectile motion, if I'm going to throw the object from here, let's say at some time object is here with the coordinate x and y. So this is your x and this is your y. 
तो एस एक्स एस एक्स यू एक्स अगेन यूल बिकम यू कॉस थीटा एक्स अगेन इज जीरो एंड लेस एट द इंस्टेंट टाइम इज वॉट आवर टी सो वंस अगेन वी यूज यू एक्स टी प्लस हाफ एक्स टी स्क्वायर फॉर एस एक्स विल राइट एक्स यू कॉस थीटा इन टू टी प्लस जीरो सो द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू गेट इज यू कॉस थीटा इन टू टी इन अ सेम मैनर नाउ इफ आल डिफाइन वाई देन एस वाई इज वाई यू वाई इज यू साइन थीटा ए वाई इज माइनस जी एंड द टाइम इज टी सो एस इज यू टी प्लस हाफ ए टी स्क्वेर दैट मीन्स इट इज वाई इक्वल टू यू साइन थीटा टी माइनस हाफ जी टी स्क्वेयर सो दिस इज वॉट आवर इक्वेशन टू सो वी गॉट टू इक्वेशंस वन इज फॉर फाइंडिंग द एक्स कॉर्डिनेट द अदर वन इज फाइंडिंग द वाई कॉर्डिनेट वॉट वी एक्चुअली वॉन्ट टू फाइंड वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द इक्वेशन ऑफ ट्रेजेक्ट्री एंड एज आई टॉट यू we can find equation of trajectory by eliminating the time and establishing the relation between x and y so what we do here now we'll do we'll find time from equation 1 that is x upon u cos theta and we substitute this value in equation 2 so it is u sin theta into x upon u cos theta minus half g x square upon u square cos square theta what i did here you can see from here i got this time and i have substituted this time over here in this equation so finally you are going to get this so from here we get the final expression for equation of trajectory so this is how we can derive the concept for what our oblique projectile motion so dear students we have discussed about horizontal and oblique part the rest of the part we'll discuss next time